don't belong here I want more out of life The longer we stay here Our boots get stuck in the mud Let's pack up a life, baby And call it a night Cause the longer we stay here The harder the fight I said hey, yeah, yeah, yeah Call it a start By leaving behind what's brave Hello and welcome back to another look At some of the delicious meals we've been having around here So glad you decided to click on this video and join in We are going to start here with What we thought was about the best pork chops that we had ever had. We love just a traditional fried pork chop with not much else besides salt, pepper, and flour and fry it up. But this was a really, really yummy, tasty pork chop. Now, of course, I'm using here, as you can see, a pork tenderloin. I'm cutting it up myself. And I decided to do a panko Parmesan crusted pork chop. It is so, so simple, very few ingredients. I think the real key with pork is don't overcook it. You wanna make sure you get it cooked all the way through, but you don't wanna overcook it where it's dry and tough. So as you can see, we've gotten all of it cut up here that I'm gonna to make tonight, and we're gonna get started with the seasonings first. If you have salt, pepper, and garlic powder in your pantry or in your spice cabinet, you have all you need as far as seasonings go for these pork chops. I seasoned both sides. We like pepper. If you think that looks like a lot, we really enjoy pepper. Um, it was actually just right. So I just put a little less on this side since I had a little bit more on the other side. And of course the garlic and salt. After you have this all seasoned up with those simple seasonings, we're going to go in with Parmesan cheese. I'm just using the kind that's already um, grated up in the grain bottle. And then you are going to go on top of that with the panko breadcrumbs. These are just the original. They're not seasoned. You just kind of want to press that down so it adheres really nicely to the pork chops. I'm going to turn them over and do the Parmesan cheese and the panko on the other side. And to my cast iron, I am putting a little bit of olive oil and some butter. I am going to fry these pork chops in the skillet first, and then I'm gonna transfer them to the oven. I was following a recipe, and that was their suggestion on these. I will say I have made these since then, and I fried them up in a nonstick skillet, all on the stove top, not putting them in the oven at all, and they turned out just as great that way. And I'd say you could even do these in your air fryer. But as for this recipe, I did the cast iron and then moved it to the oven. And it was absolutely perfect doing it this way. and look below I will link the recipe that I followed for this uh, down below or type it out or maybe both just make sure you always check below um, for any recipes that go along with what I am showing for my sides tonight I am cooking up some green beans just seasoned with some garlic salt some pepper and some onion cooked in there and I am boiling up some potatoes to make mashed potatoes to go along with it all right we are going to turn these over here you want to give them, give them plenty of time to get a crust on there. 
Um, I think I've said this already in other videos recently, but I am still getting to know my new stove. Um, we're having some issues with our flame and just can't seem to get it adjusted as per the manual, but we're working on it and I sometimes don't get my skillet just in the right spot. So anyhow, I'm learning my new stove here. But you can see several of these browned up just perfectly. And now we're gonna get these transferred to the oven. All right, they're out of the oven and I'm just gonna turn them over very gently just to kind of see what the other side looks like. Get everything kind of as evenly browned up as I can. And then I'm gonna pull out my meat thermometer here in just a minute just to make sure the internal temperature. quick this time you guys it went over the internal temperature and I was just hoping that they weren't dry but they were not but just really keep your eye on them I followed the directions and they still cooked faster than I thought they were so delicious here I've topped my green beans with just some of the fried onions and there are my potatoes all mashed up and this made such a delicious meal I cannot say enough how much we enjoyed these pork chops we love them. Like I said, we've already had them again. Be sure and give this recipe a try. As far as sides, we love mashed potatoes and we love green beans. I could serve those with just about any meat or protein and we would be happy with it. Sliced up a little Roma tomato here and this meal absolutely hit the spot. If you decide to give this one a try, I hope you love it as much as we did. Hello everyone, I just thought I would talk to you for a quick second while I am in here working in my kitchen. I am making, as a side for tonight's dinner, um, baked beans. And I'm making them how I always had them growing up. My mom always made baked beans, like a big 9 by 13 of baked beans with ground beef in it. It was very hearty, it was sweet, tangy, delicious, and it was, it could be a meal in and of itself. We never had it that way, but I'm just saying that's how filling and how much good stuff was in it. So I'm making that today and thought I would talk to you for just a second. Um, today is October 11th, I think, and we really haven't had Cold here. We've had a couple cool mornings, I would say, a couple cool evenings. Okay, I'm finished messing now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add in my spices while I'm talking to you. So, um, yeah, we've had very nice, nice fall weather. And yesterday it was 86, and I'm in Indiana. And this is garlic powder. I'm just shaking some in. This is a I'm not measuring, never measure recipe. So. You can just watch what I'm doing. I will not have a recipe or ingredients or amounts listed below this time because this is just, you just make this. I make it how my mom made it. That's just how it goes. Um, a little bit of pepper. So anyway, yeah, we have had a nice warm fall and I think the weather is trending downward starting tomorrow. And so um, this is salt. And so I'm one of those people who, although I'm ready for the temperature to be cooler, I still hold on to fall, or fall, <laughs> no, I hold on to summer things. So like, I'm not ready to jump all into fall food just yet until it gets cold. Um, I'm not ready to wear fall clothes until it gets cold. I just kinda, you know, I go by the weather. I do decorate my house when I'm ready, but otherwise I, like to just keep on doing 
things that are kind of weather appropriate. So that means still grilling out, still having watermelon as long as I can find it in the store, <laughs> all that good stuff. So tonight, all that to say, we are having hot dogs. My husband has been wanting baked beans. I don't know if I said that, this style. And uh, I thought, what am I gonna make to go with these baked beans? So I bought hot dogs and hot dog buns. We're gonna have that and chips and these yummy baked beans on the side. Now, sometimes my mom would open up just a can of pork and beans, and I, we still do that sometimes. Those are delicious. But back in the day, they didn't have like Bush's baked beans and all of these pre-sweetened um, and seasoned and all that. It was just like, you know, Vandy Camp's pork and beans. So now you can kind of get away with opening up one of these and you don't have to do too much to it and it tastes really good but I'm gonna make this the way she always made it this is just chat time while I make these um, beans so I'm using there we go here the Bush's original so I've got my ground beef that was a half an onion a whole onion is fine and I'm adding in my beans here. I did some salt, garlic powder, pepper. Did I do anything else? Oh, a little bit of paprika, just for fun. Okay, now into this, I'm gonna put a little bit of mustard, quite a bit more of ketchup, and I'm gonna put some brown sugar, and we'll see where we're at. So I thought I'd just talk to you for a second. You leave a comment down below. Do you hang on to summer? in the way of foods and that kind of thing or do you just dive straight into fall and start wearing your fall clothes when it's you know still hot outside <laughs> some people do that and if you're one of those people that's okay i know people get excited to get their boots on and all that kind of stuff but i can't do that i would roast i, I have to do weather appropriate things okay ketchup so that looks like maybe a third a cup Possibly mustard, a squirt. I'm gonna mix this together and we'll come right back. All right, I just opened up a fresh bag of ground, ground, brown sugar. I don't wanna go too crazy. So that's maybe about a fourth a cup pack, I'd say. I'm gonna stir this in real quick and give this a little taste test. I have the heat still on very low here on my pan. Now these are gonna be transferred to a baking dish and they'll bake for a good while in the oven. Another thing my mom would do, a lot of times she would make kind of what I've made right here with the ground beef and all, and then she would top, in fact, a lot of the time, not always, but almost, she would top this with strips of bacon she just laid them out in whole strips. See, I tell you, this could be a whole meal, especially if you made it like that. So let me just see here where we're at on the taste. All right, it needs nothing. It tastes absolutely perfect to me. So I'm gonna spray a baking dish and get this in it. All right, I've got my eight by eight sprayed here. Let me grab my beans, I think. The eight by eight is gonna be right. Let's see. Yes. All right. Perfect. Get all those drippies. All right. There we have it. Oh my goodness, these look so good. I will put these in the oven and I'll probably bake these a good 30, 45 minutes, I'd say. I'm gonna put foil over the top. And here are the baked beans out of the oven. I just pulled them out right this second and took off the foil. Let's give them a stir here and see what they look like. Okay, you can see they're steamy. Very, very thick. These look amazing. How delicious. OK, 
Okay, like I said, this is our side for tonight and we are having hot dogs, baked beans, and I had a little bit of mashed potatoes left and I made potato cakes. Check these out. I remembered that I had some leftover mashed potatoes in my refrigerator. I have made these on my channel many, many times. It's just basically some cold mashed potatoes, some flour, a little bit of milk or water, some salt and pepper. Fry them up in a pan and you have delicious potato cakes. They are so yummy. Here is my plate, three potato cakes, a little dish of the baked beans and a hot dog. This was so good, you guys, simple. Maybe not the most healthy, so delicious though. All right, now to end this video, I'm gonna show you some clips of some other dinners that we had, sausage gravy and homemade biscuits. I will link the homemade biscuit recipe below. I've made them on my channel many times. Fried up a couple eggs. No, they don't look fancy or beautiful, but they were delicious. I also fried up some apples that we had in the refrigerator and set out some homemade apple butter to go along with it. Just a simple dinner of sausage gravy and biscuits and eggs and fried apples and apple butter as the sweet ending. This was delicious. Another night, it could not have been simpler. I had earlier um, cut up all the veggies and put together a delicious salad. We just put our favorite toppings on there and we served it alongside Kroger fried chicken. That was such a big chicken breast, it took up half the plate. How simple is that? I picked up some chicken, I had a busy day of errands, and served it with a salad. This meal was over the top. I have also showed this on my channel. It is a Mississippi pot roast. I served carrots along with it. Those also were in the crock pot. Green beans with the crunchy onions on top. Mashed potatoes. See, I told you those were some of our favorite sides. And then I also made a big pan of cornbread. All our kids were home this night and they love this type of a meal. They love the cornbread. I just did some cucumbers, and onion, tomato alongside, and we had a big dish of watermelon to serve along for dessert. There's a look at my plate. It was oh so good. I want to thank you again for every time you stop by my channel and you watch my videos. If you enjoyed this, any part about it, what's for dinners, dinner ideas and inspiration, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and i'll see you guys on the next one